What's the matter with this? I call this representative government. And Salvatore, Feldman, O'Reilly, Nelson. It's an Italian, a Jew, an Irishman, and a regular American. <laughs> America owes Norman Lear a bucket full of laughs. He and I spoke just after his 100th birthday last year. And as I mentioned earlier, he recently turned 101. Welcome to I Love Liberty. This rootin' tootin' flag-waving celebration of America was produced in 1982 less than 10 years after the end of the Vietnam War, a war that nearly tore this country apart. I love liberty. It is as blissful a memory as I have. That's Norman Lear, arguably the most successful producer of situation comedies in television. Norman has always been committed to the promotion of free speech. Indeed, his political action group, People for the American Way, produced this special. Somehow, Norman even found a way to have the late John Wayne, who supported the war, and Jane Fonda, who very publicly opposed it, kind of, sort of, make nice on nationwide TV. I think that she's a little mixed up in her thinking, and I guess she feels the same about me. That's our right as Americans. I'm glad to live in a country where people are free to disagree, even if it's me some of them disagree with. A little lukewarm, but as symbols of national reconciliation go, not bad. Could you run that same special today? Oh, I am determined to find out. <laughs> Norman Lear, you probably heard, turned 100 last year. And when he talks about producing television specials now, he is not, I promise you, kidding. A half a dozen are in the works. We will be making more, 10 episodes of one of the shows. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Uh, I love it. That's... I love it more. Boy, the way Glenn Miller plays. In his heyday, let's say 40 or 50 years ago, situation comedies, the big ones, drew tens of millions of viewers. Norman produced a bunch of those. And then they Here's one he's thinking of redoing. I'm pregnant. Anything but an easy layup. Norman Lear is considering recasting and reproducing one of the most controversial sitcom episodes of all time. You're kidding. That episode of Maud was broadcast 50 years ago. A 47-year-old woman who fears that she and her husband may be too old to have another child. It's legal in New York now. And she's considering an abortion. We finally have the right to decide what we can do with our own bodies. All right, then will you please get yours into the kitchen? <laughs> You're going to piss a lot of people off, Norman. You know that. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting? Because I wouldn't change a word. The last moment of that show is something I remember as clearly as anything I ever had anything to do with. Just tell me, Walter, that I'm doing the right thing, not having the baby. And his response was, in the privacy of our lives, you're doing the right thing. In the privacy of our own lives, you're doing the right thing. CBS got thousands of letters. What do you think will happen this time around? They'd get tens of thousands. <laughs> and then, of course, there was Archie. I know what Dr. Feinberg said. Feinstein. Feinstein, Feinberg, it all comes to the same thing, and I know that tribe. <laughs> what made Archie Bunker so relatable was the likelihood that somewhere at work, at the hairdresser, around the Thanksgiving table. If you liberals go on getting your way, we're all going to hear one big loud flush. <laughs> That's the sound of the USA going down the toilet. Every family had or knew someone like an Archie who made us cringe. Who are you calling you people? You people are you people. <laughs> Even as we stifled a laugh, you always managed to make us laugh, Norman, about the most dangerous things, racism, hatred, bigotry.
Can you make us laugh today? If I were doing it today, yes. I would have a 13-year-old daughter who represents everything I care about and is a pain in the ass talking about it in her brilliance and feelings about America. She would just at 13 know a lot about the foolishness of the human condition and recognize problems that her parents are living with that even they are not facing. I have all the faith in the world in your creativity, but you're putting a lot on those slender shoulders. That, that 13 year old's got a lot to carry. She isn't gonna get us out of this mess, but she's gonna help. We are more sensitive today about not doing things that would offend gay people. We are more sensitive today about not doing things that offend women or others of minority groups. That has to be a good thing. You say we have to be more sensitive today. You think uh, we're not? I, I'm not sure I agree with that. Every office now has a department of someone who is there to make sure that others in the department don't go around offending one another. We didn't have that 50 years ago. Is that a good thing? Oh, my God. My sense is there's something wrong that we're living in a culture where that has to exist. That there is a role for a person to make sure that other people are being decent humans. It says something about the culture we live in. I'm getting the impression that what you're saying is we shouldn't need a department oh, to no, make us be nice need. to one another. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. But your vehicle for getting us there has always been the ability to make us laugh at ourselves. The foolishness of the human condition. You're still gonna do that. I pray so.